We're going to turn now to retired U.S. Army Major Mike Lyons. Uh, Major Lyons, can you talk about your reaction to this? Well, I mean, his message has always been one of unified command. I think he acts as a commander in chief, and I think that message is really for his troops. I don't think it's for anybody else. Uh, we see Russia obviously had a problem uh, with uh, with the Wagner Group. For, for, as it's splintering right now, it's not really taking hold in Belarus. So again, that message was uh, the president's message to his troops as the counteroffensive keeps going. Uh, Major Lines, the Biden administration has been asked to, and is now, I think taking more active consideration of approving uh, the use or sending over cluster munitions. I explain to people what those are, why the Ukrainians want them, and maybe why there's some reluctance from the U.S. to send them. Sure. Uh, cluster munitions, dual purpose uh, improved conventional munitions are uh, sub munitions within artillery rounds. This is an artillery round similar to the exact one that I fired when I was a uh, battery commander during Desert Storm, and they provide much better effect with regard to artillery effects. We'll show you a quick video here. This is an air-delivered uh, cluster-type munition where, as it falls to the ground, you'll see it airburst over the target and then fire much of a wider spread, give much more lethality against anti-personnel and anti-vehicles. It, uh, it, it is a type of weapon system that, though, unfortunately, has, uh, has some... Uh, cons to it. It leaves a battlefield that is dirty. There's things that could happen on the battlefield uh, that, that, that soldiers can't necessarily come back over the, uh, over the ground at the same time. But however, for Ukraine's purposes, what it will do is it'll improve their counteroffensive because it'll, it'll allow them to get into digging troops, it'll allow them to get vehicles that are dug in in the defenses that Russia currently has. We just talk about dirty for a second. Dirty means that uh, civilians and soldiers can be injured by the munitions that are left over. That's right. And this is one of the things that if other NATO countries now have actually banned them. They, they've, uh, in 2008, a munitions treaty that the United States is not part of, but other NATO countries have banned them because these munitions, as you see, um, are little, little kind of things that, that children and other people kind of pick up on the ground. They don't always go off. So that's why they're considered dangerous. However, they provide much more lethality than the regular field artillery weapons that we have. I, I want to ask you about another... Uh, Ukraine has long been pushing for long-range missile capability. Um, the UK sent them, I believe, the Storm Shadow mm -hmm. uh, capability, and they've utilized it to some degree. The U.S. has been very wary of sending what are known as attackums. Um, and part of the reason is because of the own, uh, how much the U.S. actually has in terms of uh, the weaponry itself. The Wall Street Journal reported on Friday that they may actually be moving back towards the direction of saying yes to that. I'm told there's some caution on that and we should maintain it. However, why do the Ukrainians want this so badly? Why has the U.S. been so reluctant to give it to them? Yeah, ATACMS would be a game changer here for um, the Ukrainian uh, military with regard to their capability. The 200 miles of range that they give them, long range attacks uh, that they don't have right now. However, it's a high demand, low density weapon system. So we've seen the chairman of the Joint Chiefs say we just don't have a lot to give away. We don't have a lot of these out in our inventory because of uh, they're just not manufactured. Um, they're fired from this, this HIMARS, the, the platform that they already have there. And if you look at a map, what it would do is it would allow Ukraine to attack into places like Sevastopol and then into Rostov. And what it would do, it would force the Russian command and control and logistics supply lines to go away from the front and have to go back here for their own survivability, giving the Ukraine maneuver forces much better chance in order to succeed as they go on their counteroffensive. All right, Major Lyons, I'd love for you to come over to the table so we can talk a little bit more. Um, we're here with, uh, obviously, Shelby and Max Rose. Um, the Ukrainian President Zelensky said in a news conference on Saturday that he's afraid to lose bipartisan support from the U.S. following, quote, dangerous messages coming from some Republicans. Max, I want to start with you. There's been a long shift towards more sort of uh, familial language about Russia. And we has, there's long been sort of hostility to spending overseas. So is he right to be concerned? He's absolutely right to be concerned, but we've seen this really strange reversal of traditional political positions. Uh, normally, the Democratic Party has been the party that has been more anti-war um, and less interventionist. And Biden's messaging is back to the sort of, we support democracies no matter what. Sure, and we support our allies. Um, it's been a very pro-NATO, traditional preservation of the world order message. And the Democratic Party has been impressive the degree to which they have remained unified 
Conversely, the Republican side is in absolute disarray over this issue, um, with a very strong isolationist bent, in fact, driven by DeSantis and Donald Trump at this point. Yeah, I think that's actually a really good point, because when you talk to Biden administration folks in this space, they are less concerned about the House Republicans kind of hemming and hawing or, or uh, shouting about Ukraine aid, and far more concerned about the leading presidential candidates driving more Republicans outside of kind of the small group of isolationists um, and creating major problems because they are going to need a new funding package within the next couple of months. How does that resonate on the campaign trail? Yeah, I think it's going to be a really big deal within the Republican Party, partially because there's kind of this war within the party over what America first means. Mm. So there's kind of the traditional version of America first, which I've heard argued as America first doesn't mean America only. And then there is the America first viewpoint where it is quite literally America first. And so it's, I remember reporting, I think it was my second article ever for Semaphore when we launched about how back in October, 2022, which was well before Trump actually announced, he was already getting people in his ear, ear from both sides of the aisle trying to convince him either A, to support Ukraine aid, or B, to support cutting it off. So clearly this has been brewing for a really long time. Major Mike Lyons, I just have one more question because Ukraine is in the middle of a brutal counteroffensive, right? And so this war is not going to get any easier as they try and make their way towards the sea. So what are we looking at when we talk about sending more vicious weapons into what is turning into one of the largest land wars in Europe in decades. Yeah, I mean, we still haven't sent really the offensive weapons. They've just, the weapons they have are really defensive. I am surprised the counteroffensive even started. Frankly, they're doing, trying to do a counteroffensive against what has historically been successful. No blitzkrieg, no air superiority. You know, these kinds of weapons, the, 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 the cluster bombs. And by and that, you mean both Russia and Ukraine correct. do not have air support, support, no, superiority. No, the Russians do. No, the Russians do. The Russians have The Russians have still tremendous advantage on the ground here. Let's, let's be sober-eyed about like that. But not like helicopters, et cetera. I mean, yeah. it's still been right. not so, what it could be. No. And and so until some of these other weapons come, the ATACMs, likely the, the NATO-based tanks in the next three months, I think crew survivability is really important for the Ukraines. They have, they have to hold off right now and, and give themselves a chance to make sure that when some or more of those weapon platforms comes, that they'll be able to use them.